Welcome back everyone, my name is Altamar and we are going to be continuing our Let's Play of Pathfinder Kingmaker. Where we left off last time, we were traveling down towards Patax. We're going to look around a little bit while we're here though. We're going to avoid enemies for now. Not really in the... no, well, we failed to sneak past, so we are going to be fighting these enemies. There is no option not to... oh, come on. Why is it always Elder Elementals? How many of these are roaming the land? Like, honestly, there must be just... Dozens of them just cruising around. Oh, also before we go too far. I'll show you in a minute here. We did get a new weapon uh, Did I equip it? We did uh, we got obliteration from uh, Varus Varric? Varric. Finally, I did dismiss him a few minutes or a few uh, videos ago But I did regain him after that video actually and then he gave us the earthbreaker finally it's called obliteration it's a pretty nice weapon plus five vicious earthbreaker uh it can do in stacking negative two ac penalty to the target which actually is really nice that being said i don't think it's quite as good as the sword we're currently using so we're just gonna Taste keep on with that one fury. can you charge all right we're gonna charge no we're not all right five foot step in maybe yes perfect Oh, also, I think our Smilodons still have level drain, and so does Valerie and uh, Knock Knock. So I guess it's not too bad. We're in this fight, we can quickly, you know, fix up our group afterwards. Where's the other? Air? There's two, right? There's only the two air elementals, I guess. We shall overcome. I'm still a little. I think we didn't get the good ending of the Tenebra's Depths. I'm sure someone will let me know about that. But I would really like to know, because it seemed very anticlimactic. It's like, oh yeah, you killed the big bug, another one will come back. Such is life. I couldn't find any, like, concrete answer on the internets as to what the good ending is supposed to be. So, I mean, maybe we got the good ending, but it just felt sort of like a hollow ending. I know it was sort of meant to be like a dungeon crawler dungeon, but at the same time, we did a lot of cool things in there, and so I kind of want to make sure we got the whole thing. That being said, we can't really go back and fix it, even if there is something else in there, because the bosses need to drop their, like, special items or whatever, so you can confront the dragon about them. So we might have just missed out on that, unfortunately. This might be the reality of the situation. Some of the... Hidden items are based on perception, and if we flubbed all the rolls, then we won't be able to find the items in question, and we just can't do anything else about it, so. Together we stand. That might be where we ended up landing on that. Regardless, I mean, it's still a fun dungeon. We fought a really cool end boss. I don't know if it's the actual end boss, but we killed a spawner Robogug at the very least. Are these Smilodons level drained? They're actually not, but they're not as good as they used to be, because one of them's level 12 and the other one's level 10, and we're up to level 15 now at almost level 16, actually. So, I'm approaching the point of the game where maybe we should... Well, Amiri's Smilodon is still decent, but level 10 is not really all that good, and we're going to hit level 16 soon, and it's just going to get more and more outclassed as time goes on. So I'm not really sure what to do about our pet. There's probably another boon animal ability we can get at some point, I think. But hmm, I guess we'll find out. Which way are we going? Let's go this way. I like how we're just like walking all over Patax and be like, Peaceful travelers, is this a skeleton guy? It might be the skeleton guy. I'm hoping it kind of is. It is. Do you have anything exciting to buy? Ooh, he does have some new things but nothing really all that good you know we're just gonna go straight to the tournament i just remembered he has Please, the uh, merchant at the tournament has tons of good items we can buy like really nice items we should go take a look there and see what we can purchase hopefully something really neat i just remembered that that is a thing because i remember buying i think an earthbreaker plus five when i was there last time because i don't think we had obliteration at that point is there no bridge back across the Bataxian River on this side? Guys? I don't want to walk all the way back around. Resting would be nice, don't you think? Man, okay, we're gonna have to walk all the way. Oh, there's a path there, but that's not gonna help us. You would think that they would put a bridge somewhere in their territory. 
Then again, we don't have very many bridges in our own territory, so... Perhaps that's our own fault. We should also probably rest because, well... Valerie is immune to fatigue, nobody else is. I guess we should go to the tournament anyways, because it's been like a couple weeks since we got the invite and... I know it's a main storyline thing, so we should probably do it. Why is it lagging? Oh, it's auto-saving, that's why. Mysterious Shrine, we need to go there. Oh, where did I put my notes for this? Damn it, I made notes of this one the last time I played the game. Shoot. Um, yeah. I'll be right back and I will uh, quickly figure out where my notes are for that. Alrighty, I found my notes. It's this one. This one's in the middle. Without a doubt. Very small zone. Nothing really going on except for the Mysterious Shrine and the fact that we can just... You know what would be funny? If there's a chance... I know that they would put this in the game because that would be incredibly infuriating if they actually did, but it should be kind of amusing if, like, random roving monsters could move the obelisk. Just be like, I don't think it belongs there. Let's put it in a different spot just as, like, you're about to finish the quest. It just turns itself off. I think that'd be kind of funny. And frustrating, without question, but still pretty great. Alright, so let's get out of here. We're almost to the actual tournament, to the Rushlight tournament. Uh, the thing about leaving Patax is that once the tournament ends, we actually have to leave until later on in the game when we enter into a little bit of a... Please tell me there's a way across this bridge. Across this river. I guess there's not. We'll go the other way. At least we got the Mysterious Shrine. I know there's one there. There's also one on the other side somewhere. Wait, hold up. Let's go to the island. Hemlock Island. Reaching the Wooded Isle, we stopped to look around. The locals lived around the lake, fully believing the place was cursed. Day and night colored lights supposedly appeared around the island, and some brave souls would even watch them fly over the water. The local legend said that anyone who saw these lights would be would definitely disappear. If not that night, then within the month for sure. We didn't see any lights at all, though. The island seemed forlorn and completely uninteresting. Silent and gloomy pines loomed over the grey rocky shore, a narrow path disappeared into the woods. We decided to follow the path and explore the mysterious island. Whoever made the path clearly didn't use it often. We could barely make it out among the ferns. We had to walk single file along the path as branches from the crowned bushes grabbed at our sleeves and backpack straps only to hit the next person in line once we passed. The forest grew taller and thicker and ever darker. The air suddenly grew intensely humid as clouds of milky white. Incredibly thick fog flowed up from the ground. And believe me, dear reader, when I say incredibly thick, we're not talking like how an innkeeper might tuck up his soup. It became impossible to see past our own noses, and it was like our ears had been stuffed with cotton. The air itself had become so dense it was like walking through water. We had to navigate by touch, and we could only move it, or only move half as fast as we'd been going. Eltmar, who had been walking last, was forced to stop. With great difficulty, he could barely make out the muffled and worried voices of his friends ahead. Something had to be done, but what? I'm going to stay put and call my friends. No matter how loud he screamed, Eltmar's voice could not penetrate the thick blanket of fog. His companions' voices grew fainter and fainter until they died out entirely. Eltmar felt the sharp realization that he was completely alone. The fog began to clear, and soon there was no trace of it. Eltmar looked back, and his friends were nowhere to be seen, but up ahead, he could just make out a blinking, welcoming light. As Eltmar approached the light source, it quickly became clear that it was a bonfire. Soon, Eltmar entered a partly the clearing and saw all of us. But why then did no one jump up? to greet him, or give him a welcoming yell or hug, or even offer a cup of tea. Why had everyone frozen in their seats, spoons lifted in the air? Why the deathly silence? Imagine Elthmar's surprise when he finally saw why his appearance had caused such a strange reaction. It seemed he hadn't been missing at all. He had been sitting with us, all by, all by the fire, watching his exact copy emerge from the forest. Yes, dear reader, just imagine it. Two copies of the king met in the clearing, seemingly identical. But which of the two was real? The king, sitting by the fire, said... I can tell you exactly how many meals we carried with us down to the last pack of hardtack. Can you do the same? A deafening silence hung in the air. One could hear the thoughts churning through our brains. Then the Eltimar sitting by the fire laughed in a strange voice. He stood up and began rising into the air. The mask dropped and we saw a short pale man with blonde hair and parrot-like wings with bright feathers. We all went after him together. 
but Eltamar held on to him most tightly. His hands gripped the Joker's wing in an iron grip. Then an ear-piercing whistle sounded from all around us, and stones began raining on us from above. The imposter was aided by his winged kin, who grabbed him by the hands and began pulling him up. We didn't give up, but in the end we were overpowered. There were just too many, dear reader. They quickly reclaimed their pr our, our prisoner from us. Soaring into the air and shaking their fists at us, they flew off. We sat a long time around the fire, laughing and chatting about how Altamar cleverly dispelled the illusion. Why did the music just turn off? Oh, well. And when morning came, we looked around at the rainbow-colored feathers left behind by our uninvited guests. I noticed one of them had lost a valuable bracelet in the fight. We ended up with a trophy, at least. Well, there we go. <laughs> that would be quite the situation, though. You're like, oh, I'm glad everyone made it here safely. Wait, who's that? I think we also need to switch out Kinera. King Iravetti greets you personally. The bulky Kellid is broad-shouldered and looks to be somewhere around 50 years of age. His golden crown sits, stop, or sits on long, greasy hair above a heavily powdered face covered in bristle, and his expensive doublet is stained with oily spots. He guffaws as he squeezes you in a bear hug, enveloping you in the mixed scents of sweat, wine, and expensive perfume. Well, my crown-bearing brother, welcome to my home. Stuff yourself, drink, be my guest. You've proven yourself in combat as well as affairs of state. Let's see how you do at having fun. Brother? What? Oh, why? Ah, it's the crown. Hmm, he's better. I feel like a child in a sweet shop. Entertainment, shopping, new trade connections, and the smell of intrigue in the air. Hmm. I pat Irvedi on the back. Happy to finally meet you. It's no good for kings and queens to stay in our palaces all the time. We need to meet, be friends with one another. It's all about keeping up neighborly relations. You know. I do know. Thank you. So here's the plan. First, the fish's triathlon. Then, a boasting contest. And in the evening, the best part, <laughs> a drunken melee. Or in die. the interim, there'll be a buffet, a fair, jugglers, acrobats, all the usual entertainment. And after the melee, I'll announce the winner. And then we'll have a festive banquet and a fireworks show. <laughs> then we just drink till morning or find a tent to crawl into. Your own or someone else's, depending on your luck. By the way... A knockout such as yourself will always be welcome in my tent. <laughs> Just joking. Just a joke. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. I'll have to seal your sheath. This is a peaceful celebration, after all, and bullies will be kicked out immediately. It doesn't matter if it's a king who decided to kick up a row or just a shopkeeper. So behave yourself and don't start any fights while you're here. Well, I have to go. If you need anything, talk to Nunzio Arpaia. He is my master of ceremonies. So he's responsible for organizing this mess. <laughs> have fun. Sorry, I just need to... There we go. Turn up my volume a little bit on my headphones. All right. Edna Aldori, Julie Aldori, so there's some Aldori people here, but I want one person in particular, the traitor. Here we are. Show me your wares. He's got plus four items, but I'm looking specifically for named items. So this is a plus three ruining mage, or mage blade with shock, which is pretty nice. There's a rapier plus four just straight up, which might be useful. Whimsy is a composite short bow. A tower shield plus four might be really useful, actually, considering our current tower shield is not all that good. I was hoping he'd have mithril plate plus four. Okay, I'll buy one of those. Why does no one have rapiers? Like named ones. The spear. Let's take a look. Let's go down the list and see if there's any named rapiers. Scimitar, longsword, rapier plus four, of course. 
Nope, nothing like that. At least there's a tower shield, though. Let's offer them all the junk we're taking. Or we have, I guess. And the comma plus three. We have a lot of garbage loot. I just remembered now. Like, so much garbage. That is actually one of the best longswords in the entire game, and I might even consider respecking um, our character to use it. It's actually the masterwork item from uh, one of the artisans. I can't remember which one, though. Oh, what did I just put in there? Yeah. Dark for Oh, don't care. Redeemer is also an incredibly beautiful weapon. Holy flaming destructive. I wonder if I could dual wield sword. No, I'm just kidding. She's not a dual wielder. She could be, but she's not. Ah, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Neutralizer is such a nice short bow, but we have no one that uses short bows, so there's no real point in keeping it. Malevolent Scream is not too bad. Glaive plus three, two great swords plus two. I'm just getting rid of those. Grim Finale is just a plus two weapon. Don't care about that. No one's going to use that. Light Mace plus five, gone. Malevolent Scream will keep. Perfection and Redeemer are both amazing, and we're going to hang on to those for the time being. Breastplate plus one and three, four are gone. Chain Shirt Dragon Scale Plate is beautiful, but also, again, I think it makes us slower. Um, all the full plate plus two, and the hide armor plus ones. And the Jester's Vest. Mithril full plate plus one. Patchwork hide. Python skin doublet is gone. And studded leather plus five is gone. I'm not going to go bother going through this at this point. There's just too many items there. Don't care too much about that. So, tower shield plus four. That's what we're buying, I guess. Now, she does have Flame Guard, Tower Shield plus... Have I been using the wrong shield? Doesn't matter anyways. It's not that big of a deal. But plus four is a little bit better. So, 45 armor now. Which is pretty good. Does she not have gloves? What do we have for gloves? Uh, bracers are not going to be useful. Alright, let's take a look here. We have a million things in our inventory. We actually don't have that many gloves. You stole this. Let's take a look. So we didn't get any... We have this ring, right? She's gonna wear that. Puts her at 47 armor class. But she doesn't need this anymore. They don't stack, so she can have a different ring. Do we have any other rings that are not ring of protections? What's this one? Negative energy resistance, 20. Might be useful. Just another ring of protection. If I were a good ring, what would I be? It's actually not that many good rings in our inventory, unfortunately. That ring is so good, though. Anyways, uh, not important at the moment. What about these belts? The Empowered Spell Belt is really good. Who are we going to give that to? I could give it to him. He doesn't use a lot of first or second level spells, though. Does he? I'm trying to think what he even uses. Bless? I guess at level one. Don't know if it'd be even really all that useful for him, to be honest. Especially since we could give him some sort of like um, belt of perfection. Or windfall. Plus one to attack rolls and all saving throws. That's kind of a nice one. As well. It's just so hard to make decisions sometimes. Alright. What's this one do? Plus four to Wisdom and Constitution, and cast Mass Bear's Endurance once per day. Not particularly useful for us. Don't care about those Bracers. What's he using for Bracers? Oh, right. Attack rolls. You know what? I'll be back in like two minutes. I'm going to go through all my inventory and figure out exactly what I'm going to wear, and then I'm just going to sell literally everything else so we don't have to deal with this anymore. Alrighty, we've cleared out a good chunk of our inventory. We're also almost at 3 million gold. 2.73 million currently. It's not a lot we want to buy here, unfortunately, yet. There might be other traders, though. Let's go take a look around. There's at least a trader here with what appears to be crystals and junk. Let's see what he's got. Oh, he's got belts of perfection. Okay, so this is a really nice belt. We're going to pick it up. A mere $200,000. Greater belt of perfect components is... Uh, first, second, and third levels are empowered and extended, which is pretty nice. 
We already have one of those, we don't need another one. Let's an Absolver's Cloak. Plus four, bonus to AC, which is deflection, resistance bonus, and all saving throws. Bonus to persuasion, plus one bonus against evil aligned attacks. Can only be worn by good characters. We don't have any good characters, really. This is the same one for evil people. Cloak resistance plus six, which is pretty nice. There is a Ring of Circumstances. The wearer of this ring, after resting while wearing it, can activate up to four abilities from the list below. Removing the ring will immediately remove all the bonuses from it. You can get a circumstance bonus, strength, dexterity, con, intelligence, wisdom, charisma, saving throws, or, sorry, plus one circumstance saving throws, plus one to weapon damage rolls, plus two to all skill checks, plus five movement speed, plus one AC, and plus one DC to all spells and usable abilities. We are also going to pick that up. It's also extraordinarily expensive. But yeah, those two items are what we're going to pick up. Do we have any good characters that will that could use the Deflection AC and Resistance and Persuasion and additional AC? We'll take a look. $570,000 though, that is quite a lot of money. That being said, we do have this rather beautiful ring. Who should we put it on though? Probably Amiria, although she has a really nice ring currently. I could give her... She's becoming one of our more powerful characters. I also gave her this luck bonus one too, which is pretty nice. Hmm. Oh, she can use this belt as well. Uh, where is it? Belt of physical perfection. That one. There we go. She swapped out her strength con for strength dex con, which added plus an additional plus two modifier, I think. But strength didn't go up because she's already. Well, it should have gone up actually. Or should no? She's got plus eight strength from her armor. Maybe I shouldn't give it to her. I'll just give her the normal strength con one. It's only really useful for con. In fact, I might give her a different belt entirely, like this conqueror worm, because the strength isn't giving her anything. The dex will give her a like a minor amount of armor, but the con will give her a ton of life. She's now two hundred and twenty hit points, which is pretty nice. The belt of physical perfection then is going to go on Amir, or not Amiri, Valerie, who is now sitting at 50 armor class, which is pretty good, I have to say. And our main character, maybe we'll get a new belt, Dexcon. Dexcon's going to Canera, who I think is only wearing a plus four version. Yes. So she's become a little bit more powerful. Um... Yeah, that should be pretty good. The ring, though. The ring is what we're really trying to figure out who to give it to. So, Amiri is sitting at plus 31, plus 31, plus 26, plus 21. That's quite good. Actually, I'm going to give it to uh, Valerie, I think, because she doesn't have any second ring. She's using this really amazing tanking ring, but she doesn't have a decent good other ring. We're probably going to use strength, con, weapon... Oh, no, it's damage. Never mind. Uh... AC and strength con strength dex con AC probably or strength con saving throws and AC yeah something like that anyways her will save is just abysmally bad though ugh it's so awful same thing with knock knocks though his will is seven oh she's negative leveled still why did she still I thought we did this already. Do we not heal people? I feel like we've already done this. Did it not roll high enough to get rid of both negative levels? Regardless, we'll do that right now. Alright. So, we have someone to talk to here. Well, let's talk to them. A young man staggers towards you, his expensive doublet wet with wine. As he passes, he brushes shoulders with you and starts yelling, his breath rank with alcohol. Watch yourself! Who do you think you are, you pig? You trampled on my foot and ruined my doublet. I'm gonna- I demand satisfaction. Best not anger me. I've put away more people and monsters than you have bottles over the course of your waste of a life. Get out of here while you can. I- sorry. Sorry, I think I- uh, confuse you for somebody else. Sorry, my mistake. These things happen. The bully mumbles and disappears. <laughs> just call them out. Like, I've killed lots of people. Like, just a truly mammoth amount of people. Amid the tournament's frivolity, you notice that two men nearby are having a heated but hushed discussion. One wears a flashy, or one wears flashy clothing, fit for an entertainer, whereas the other wears the steel armor and red cloak of Patax's guard. It's difficult to hear what they're saying, I approach openly. 
The two huddle near one another as they speak, and due to the ambient laughter and music, you could only overhear part of the conversation. The guard sternly chides the entertainer, up to Imar, but I know that look, you're planning something. Imar interjects, motioning to the festival, tell when the celebration is just what we had planned for, but can we really stand by? He begins to raise his hand and strike a pose, as if preparing to make a bold declaration. The guard's hand intercepts Imar's arm, firmly preventing the entertainer from making a scene. I've seen it with my own eyes, and it especially like you. Imar says a few comforting words before removing Telwin's hand from his arm. Patax needs, or what Patax needs now is action, and I intend to act. The entertainer looks up and spots you, and smiles as Telwin frowns and sadly walks away. It's a rare day that life emulates screenplays, your highness. Could it be that the heroes have returned in the people's sign of need? He barely opened his mouth before he made my teeth itch with all his treacle and nonsense. Oh, heroism, that's exactly what we do. See that symbol on his clothing that marks him as a member of the Red Crescent Theatre in Patax, a fellow artist. He, she eagerly extracts her journal. Imagine the stories we could write together. Seems to be the problem. I first arrived here five years ago, answering King Irovetti's call for artists and actors to make Patax a new crucible for the arts. Admittedly, the king dedicated plenty of money to building new theatres and schools. Art only thrives, though, when there are visitors and patrons to pay for it. Imar sidles closer, lowering his voice, and that's where Irovetti has failed. The Patax River is our lifeline, connecting us to the outside world. River pirates know it, and they prey upon incoming travelers. You might think the king would thwart these pirates and defend his people, but no. He's only sent escorts to protect key shipments, leaving everyone else to the pirates' depredations. This tournament, it hides how we suffer from the king's inaction. Now, when the king's soldiers cannot, or will not, vanquish the villains, what happens in the stories? He winks and gestures knowingly, that's right. Heroes step up. Numerous victims have told me of the attacks that I pieced together the approximate location of the pirates' camp. If you can ambush and defeat them, traffic will flow, commerce will thrive, and you'll pay and you'll command the adoration of the boatmen, dockers, artists, and more. Dock workers, sorry. Naturally, I'm prepared to write a play dramatizing your exploits. What do you say? Before I accept, I have questions. The wisest protagonist always has questions. What would you like to know? How many pirates are talking? It varies by the report. The camp could have a few dozen, so you might try to take them by surprise. Why hasn't the king acted against the pirates? That's unclear. It might be a lack of soldiers, or perhaps the lack of wit leaving the pirates alone might also undercut political or economic enemies in some way, but at what cost? Is there a reward? He laughs nervously. The term starving artist is fairly common in Taldor. Perhaps you haven't heard it before. I do not have much wealth, but I can help you win the people's adoration. I also understand that among the theater props, there's a few enchanted items of actual value, so perhaps I can entice you with those. All right, I'll help support river pirates. He grins eagerly, then it's settled. I'll write down the directions to real quick, and when you're done, meet me in Patax so I can hear your account. No doubt the magistrate will be pleased to stop getting piracy complaints, too. He draws a roll of parchment from the scroll tube. I hope you'll arrive in time to see my latest production. Speaking of which, I'm already late to see it's a rehearsal. Now that's more like it. Let's go crush those pirates. And we better not waste time here. I don't like Patax or its people. Everyone's always trying to cheat you or swindle you or drag you into some other cunning scumbaggery. Ah, consider this little preview. Good hunting. River pirates, eh? Just dagger mark guests here and a table to loot. It's a big map, though. Lock picking contest. Entry fee five hundred dollars. Knock knock. You're up. The best locks from High Helm. Don't miss your chance to get one. Don't you think? I'll try to pick the locks. Splendid. Come on, the table's right here. Wish you the best of luck. He should easily be able to get this one. The first lock is open. Congratulations, but can you open the second? Probably we're gonna save first though. After the lock picking thing, we'll probably call it a video. I did it. What was the DC? I did. Don't even know. It doesn't say. Oh, it does say. DC 36. So it's actually fairly high. And the hardest one. We succeeded. Or did we? No, we didn't. Um, uh-oh! And whoops! Knock knock, you've failed me. Let's try it again. Also, we should probably move people closer for that perception check. Everyone move closer. Can somebody pick up that trap for Knock Knock?
<laughs> Did it without breaking it. Can't believe it. He popped the last luck. Only one in a million could do such a thing. We got the Trap Springer's Gloves, which is plus five competence, bonus to all trickery skill checks. We also gained 3,000 gold and 480 experience. Knock Knock, however, is poisoned and has dexterity damage, but that's fine. Together it's just damage. That's an easy, lesser restoration spell away from being taken care of. Unfortunately, they take forever to do. One dexterity damage. Carlton guests, let's wander over here. There's a few workers over there. We should probably call it here, but I'm just going to take a quick look around at this particular area. And then maybe we'll disperse this crowd and then we'll call it. Walsh, kill the way. The uh, pirates are a blight of attacks. Several concerned dock workers crowd around a finely dressed half-elf who listens to the workers with imperious dignity. It's as we've been telling you, Judge. This is the third shipment in two months they've stolen from us. Can't keep that up. Doesn't matter how good last year's business is. No cargo means no pay, and no pay means no new shipments. We asked you about the thefts before, and there's nothing changed. Where's the King's justice, Your Honor? The half-elf patiently motions for silence. It's true the pirates have taken root along the Patax River and attacked several shipments heading upriver. The king has. He pauses, noticing you for the first time. He adjusts his posture to stand taller and straightens his sash of office before continuing. The king Irvetti shall dress, shall dress the problem soon. However, he will hear no former complaints until after the rushlight tournament. In the meantime, he advises that travelers downriver take care around Littleton. Until then, partake in the festivities and the king's generosity. If anyone has further questions or concerns, I am at your disposal. The gathered workers grumble and disperse, barely mollified by this response. A bright sash cuts across this man's chest, identifying him as the Magistrate of Patax. He makes a shallow bow while keeping his head inclined upwards, as if being polite while also conveying his superiority. May the king's law guide you at the rushlight tournament today. I overheard you talking about stolen shipments. Is there a problem? Oh, yes, that. He sets his teeth into a practice smile though his teeth briefly grind together. An outbreak of river piracy has caused some consternation among the citizens. Simply avoid or exercise caution near Littleton in the meantime. Perhaps Patax would benefit from someone who has the history of vanquishing bandits. Let us be clear, declares the magistrate, narrowing his eyes with disdain. Patax's armed forces are entirely capable of handling these criminals. There's no need for would-be heroes or aspiring vigilantes to get involved, much less foreign interests. I recommend enjoying the rest of the festival. How can you be so deaf to the people's woes? And he calls himself a judge. I knew a judge once. Spent nights butchering her own kin, then went on to become a zombie. This guy seems fine by comparison. I can understand his reluctance to allow foreigners to meddle in his kingdom's affairs. What I cannot understand is such blatant negligence of justice and the safety of his citizens. We've never met. Although you're clearly somebody important. The half-elf motions to a sash. I'm the Honorable Walsh Kelvaway, a magistrate of Patax, judge of the people's concerns, and executor of the king's justice. Okay, bye. You're not very good at your job, just saying, but whatever. It's not my kingdom. Alright, we're going to end the video here. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, in the next video, we'll continue looking around the tournament. We should probably leave and go deal with... Ooh, there's another traitor. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Before anything else, let's take a quick look at what he's got here. Kinetic di- Ooh, I'm going to buy one of those. It's a better uh, kinetic diatom. Or diatom? Diatom, I think it is. For, um... Kineticists. So. Super useful. We're gonna grab that. Otherwise... Not seeing anything else. Ooh, and the wyvern. We'll take the wyvern. We'll take the azure wyvern too. Or lapis lazuli wizard wyvern, I should say. And that's it. I love these stores, because they have so much good stuff in them. Now we're back under two million dollars, though, so we've lost a little Without bit of money doubt. doing this. So I'm taking those potions, because why not? Alright, see you guys next time. Take care.